Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the brand new Civivi Conspirator button lock. Yeah, this is a good knife. I'm gonna link it right down below. I have a lot to say and some of it might surprise you so I'd urge you to stick around and hear what I have to say about this knife. But if you're just here wondering like, is it good? Yeah, it's very, very good. This is an excellent knife, but we're gonna proceed anyway. Thank you so much to we slash Civivi for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This knife, along with the other things that are sent to me from manufacturers and companies, uh, will end up getting, away, uh, getting given away on a live stream. So if you're not subscribed and you like to win free stuff, mm, you might find an interest in my channel. Let's go ahead and... Um, measure this thing. The overall length of the Conspirator is coming in at, oh, that's nice, eight inches. Nice full-size knife. Really nice to see that. We've seen some crazy XL knives and some knives that kind of felt a little bit too small here lately, um, but this is, a, this is a really good size for me. Three and a half inches on the blade and 3.4 inches on the cutting edge. Real good. Um, how about some size comparisons? Just a few. How about up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2, and there you go. Definitely a full-size knife. Just a couple more. Up against the Spyderco Para 3. And how about the uh, Bug Out? There you go. Uh, let's go ahead and do carry profile, but before we do that, let's take a look at the action. How is it? This is a button lock knife. Very nice. The D10, you guys have, uh, you know, I'm sure flipped. Uh, those of you who have flipped button lock knives, some of the popular ones like the Altus and I don't know, Kaiser makes one and and uh, then of course there's the legendary Malibu. They all feel a bit light on the detent. It's just the combination of a plunge lock and flipper tab. This guy has a little slot that sticks up just enough to comfortably do the reverse flick, which is a nice fidgety touch on an already fidget friendly knife. It does flip well, right? Uh, easy to light switch, easy to reverse flick, whatever you wanna do. It's great. It's exactly what you'd expect. Very happy with it. Um, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. We have a knife that is essentially exactly the same. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. We're looking at a knife that is a bit longer than the Para 3, a bit shorter than the PM2. Even including the flipper tab, we are not quite as tall as either the PM2 or Para 3. So this is going to be a relatively easy knife to carry, especially considering it's not really all that heavy. Um, I'm gonna guess this thing weighs between three and a half and 3.75 ounces, but perhaps it's heavier, let's find out. Almost 3.81 ounces. The ratios are not exactly perfect, but they're darn close. So, uh, ounce and inch, you subscribe to that, right? Um, then we're, we're, we're pretty close. If you don't, if you're like me, uh, this is a 3.8 ounce object that has a three and a half inch uh, cutting edge on it once it's deployed. Let's do a hardware check. Get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Um, as is the case with, I think, most Civivi knives now, the pivot is a T8, and then we have two body screws, um, one of them being one of the pocket clip screws, I think. Is that right? No, it just goes into the standoff. What? Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. Uh, but anyways, the pocket clip screws, the actual pocket clip screws are T6, and they are probably threaded the same as these screws here, but the heads of the body screws are T8. In any case, it's minimal hardware. Um, Civivi knives are very easy to take apart. That's one of the best things about them. This is no different. Should be pretty simple, so nice work. Uh, blade stock thickness, that's the last thing we need to measure. Uh, let's see here. Darn it. There we go. Blade stock thickness, probably pretty thin. Mm, yeah, 115 thousandths or so. So there you go. All right, so we are looking at, in this case, um, Micarta 
and the steel is um, Nitro V, which is uh, I think that's that's proven to be pretty preferable steel at this relative price point, right? Um, but it's also a steel that you see on much more expensive knives. Um, I think it has just kind of a preferable, well-rounded performance that a lot of people like. I don't think it's horribly expensive to buy. Uh, just as the, the raw composition, right? I think it's fairly easy to grind. It just depends on what's being made. A simple blade like this, it can probably be done relatively inexpensive. Now, of course, if you're going to do some crazy exotic compound recurve and then mirror polish it, well, then that's another story. But in this case, it's just an inexpensive thing to turn into a an inexpensive blade, right? Or the whole process is inexpensive. Wow, over explain much? Anyways, let's talk about ergonomics. Yeah, they're great. The only thing that sucks is the freaking pocket clip. And it's like I say in every Civivi review. I I just, these I don't like these clips, <laughs> but maybe everybody else does. And I'm sure Civivi and we are like, what? you're the only one complaining about it, so we're not gonna change it. For me personally, that's the first thing I feel. Like everything about the uh, handle profile is great. It's such a nice big open area. It's comfortable, nicely chamfered in here. It's just a comfortable thing to hold on to, except for the, the clip. This goosebill thing just sticks up and it's the first thing I feel. Shorter clips, less pronounced bill, and we're we're good. But as it sits, it's a it's a B minus of a clip, right? It just it is what it is. Um, the positioning of that little button there uh, is great. Like I said, flipper tab, great. The uh, jimping on the flipper tab. Nice, not overly aggressive or anything like that. You're also pretty darn close to the cutting edge, and that is a nice and thin cutting edge. This really, you know, it's, there are a few things here that kind of remind me of the Shaman, kind of. The blade shape um, kind of reminds me of the Shaman. It's just, it's thinner and different, you know. I'm not saying copy. I know some people have a very poor definition of what is a copy. Um, no. Not a copy, uh, but uh, yeah, kind of, you know, in the profile, it kind of looks like that's like a, a thinner button lock shaman, right? With with different, that also has a flipper tab and has different ergonomic lines. Um, but uh, yeah, kind of. And the, the blade profile, right? This is one of those situations where, you know, obviously there are good and bad compositions, but this is just a, you know, a blade geometry that is going to yield very good cutting performance, even if it was made out of, 420J2, right? I'm not saying, again, that blade steel is not important, but this is just a good performance blade profile, as is the case, as is usually the case with Civivi knives. Love the fuller. I love it for aesthetic reasons, and I also love it because you can use it to deploy the blade, or you can also use it to just, you know, sort of pinch it open like that. There's a flat that carries out about 50% the length of the blade. There's a nice swedge. Um, it does drop down to a, like I said, a nice, thin cutting edge, pretty delicate tip, but again, you know, it's like, don't, I know your grandpas used to use their pocket knives as screwdrivers because they were tough or something. I don't know why that equates to that in people's minds, but a knife is not a screwdriver. Uh, a knife is not a hammer. It's not a pry bar. It's a knife. So use it to cut things and poke into things. Uh, use, use the appropriate tool. Uh, in any case though, we don't have a super durable tip. So if you are driving the blade into material without knowing what's behind it, just know that the tip is not, you know, ultra durable. Uh, but for slicing, like if you're gonna go out and break down boxes or you're gonna cut thick, dense material for a long period of time, this blade is gonna do it. It's gonna do it real well. I also really love that they extended the jimping out to an area where your th if you need to do stuff like this, your thumb's got a spot for it. It's nice. It's a good texture pattern too. It's not too aggressive, but it's bitey. On flesh or gloves or whatever, it's gonna be good. Micarta, uh, it, you know, it's nice. People seem to put more value into Micarta than G10, even though it's, you know, it's all really cheap to make. Um, this stuff is, fine. It's plenty durable. It's going to get a little slimy if it gets wet. Honestly, I kind of just prefer... I know that Civivi's got to spice it up, right? The button lock is a way to spice things up, and they traditionally use a lot of G10, um, so they got to switch it up with Micarta to make things a little bit more interesting. Um, I honestly, um, on a lot of this stuff, I would just prefer peel ply textured G10. Uh, I think that that would be fine. It doesn't get slimy. I, I like G10 a little more than Micarta, but Micarta's fine, right? Um, I like that there's a little scallop here. So I, I don't know how 
um, necessary that is. It's almost nothing, um, but it, it works. It's fine, right? There's a little bit of shadow boxing going on with the liners, which we really can't see too much because the edges of this micarta are also black. But if they did a version of this with colored liners, which is something that I wish that Civivi would still do, I don't see that as much anymore. They used to do it with like the Praxis and the Backlash and, you know, all those ancient legends <laughs> from all the way back in, you know, 2018. <laughs> That <laughs> seems like a long time ago, right? Oh, boy. Um, anyways, a couple of standoffs back here. This uh, amazing, amazing solution to stupid, stupid lanyard holes. The lanyard bar, which is equally, if not more functional, and completely and totally out of the way of the element that is dramatically more important, and that would be the pocket clip and its position. Sorry, I hate lanyard holes. Hate them. Um, but you can still put one back here if you really, if you want to, if you need a lanyard on this, you can, there's a place for it. Pocket clip, we already talked about that. You can mount it on either side. I know that this seems like a right-handed button lock, but honestly, I think button locks are a little bit more convenient to use with your index finger. <laughs> I kind of would like a button lock where the button's on the other side, because I kind of want the luxury of you know, feeling this, how a left-handed person would, would feel it. it. See, I'm more secure in my position, right? My finger is right there. My index finger is right there. You don't have to, I mean, I guess, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm nitpicking here, right? It's not that. It just feels more normal. I'm right-handed, but it feels more normal to manipulate this with my left hand. So lefties, you will enjoy this despite it being a right-handed button lock. The um, lockup. Plenty secure, I'll show you guys here. We've got shouldering and a good size stop pin. Uh, no blade play whatsoever. No lock stick on this, no pivot lash. And a good, you know, as clicky as it can be for being a plunge lock, um, but a uh, strong enough detent and it is perfectly centered. Yeah, this is a good knife, uh, extremely good. Um, alongside what I consider to be, on this channel, I know that you're like, budget knives are anything under 20. I think it's 120. I think it's 42.97. Whatever. On this channel, it's $75 or less. That's what it is, right? The Altus and the Cogent, both Civivi button locks, are, in my opinion, the two greatest budget knives of all time. This guy's 80 bucks. <laughs> it's not a budget knife. It's forcing me, it has forced me to, you know, it's just, I know it's just barely over the threshold, but it's thrown this thought into my head. As this thing sits, right, this is my Carta Nitro V and it's made in China and there's no way it costs anywhere nearly, near as much to make as, as they are charging for it, right? Um, but, you know, that's how businesses operate. People don't make things and then sell them for what they cost them to make. No, they you know, sort of adjust that depending on the demand and all of that, right? It's just normal practice. And Civivi has been pretty good with pricing. Some of their Wii, some of the Wii stuff, the higher quality stuff, um, the pricing on that is a little bit crazy. Um, this is right there where I'm kind of like, eh. Like if you buy this, you're gonna love it. The design is amazing. I love the design. This is a wonderful tool, running on bearings, by the way. Um, but this is an incredible design, very straightforward. Um. I kind of want to do away with whatever it is that Civivi is using to justify the $80 price tag, right? I mean, like, if I were to sit down and talk to them, be like, tell, tell me exactly why, right? Probably what's going to come up is Micarta and Nitro V. And my answer to that would be, can we get rid of that and just make it D2 and G10 and charge 50 bucks for it? or 60 bucks or whatever, because this would be the only thing keeping this from it. This is a home run. Well, it's kind of like a home run that didn't go out of the field. It just bounced around a lot and it just took a long time for the <laughs> guy in the outfield to throw it back. And the guy running the bases was just really fast. <laughs> That's the kind of home run this is, right? It could have been a grand slam if we just change whatever they're, use, they're, they're uh, using here to justify that price tag because it at 80 bucks it's like ah, come on now stop Nick you know when you're in line at uh at the grocery store and I don't know why people do this right here let's use a bunch of knives to demonstrate this sorry this is gonna we're going off topic here right we got we got two people standing in line right and then over here this is the the checkout 
counter, right? Now, there's another person that's kind of, you're supposed to get behind the person you're in line. Not right up like this. People who do this, like get off, get off, get back. If you sneeze, you're gonna sneeze right in the back of my head. I don't want that, it's gross, right? Don't do that. But some people stand in line like this, right? We know those people, right? And then sometimes those people do this. Like while this person's checking out, right? This person's waiting in line. Sometimes these people do this. Do you think we're not going to see you? Do you think that you're invisible? Stop trying to creep up. I know that you're there. You're not gonna get in front of me. Dang it. <laughs> Um, anyways, um, what the heck was, oh, that, 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 anyways, that was my way of saying, um, stop creeping up on the prices. Do you think that we're not going to notice? No, stop it. Just stop trying to, you know, I get it. Like Nitro V is more expensive than D2, right? But a little bit. When it, when, when we put it together in a package like this, it cannot be that much more, right? If some people have like a personal, they, they personally value it more and sorry, I'm got so insane I was spitting all over the place. Some people really put a lot of value into micarta or nitro V because it's like a very specific preference for whatever reason, right? Um I just want this knife to cost like 50 to 60 bucks and just be using whatever material because D2 is fine and the peel ply texture G10 I honestly think is is more functional and if you know that's the rationalization there then Maybe we could get a version of this that would be less, and then then it would really be like the greatest freaking knife of all time. I can't uh, I can't call this a budget knife, right? It's creeping into a territory that just makes it a eh, pretty good knife. Like that's that that's what the price makes this, right? I want to celebrate this. I want this to be a holy crap! Everybody should have this, but at eighty bucks, it's just it's okay, and it is. It's a recommendable knife. Uh, I want to put this in recommended knives. I want to put it in um, cheap knives I like, and I want to put it in my favorite knives of all time. I want to put it in all three of those playlists because this is the type of knife that feels like it should it should be in all three. The ultimate, I guess, that's kind of the ultimate award on this channel, but it can't. It's it's not cheap enough to be a budget knife, and for that reason, it's also kind of not. It's not really my favorite. It's just a it's just a good knife, right? So, dang it, it's frustrating. Like, this is really good. It just needs to be made in a way, whatever, however it needs to happen, it just needs to be made in a way that makes it a budget knife because Civivi is a budget brand, right? For me, this is five bucks over the budget line. For a lot of people, I think, I think more, you know, the vast majority of people consider budget knives to be 50 or less. So this is way outside of budget territory for, I think, most people. I don't want to speak for everybody, just judging by your comments, which I read about 85,000 of a year. Um, yeah, uh, it just needs, this just, we need a less expensive version of this. Um, but pretty good. So it'll be linked down below alongside Civivi knives in general. And they definitely do still make a lot of knives in the 40 to $60 territory that are wonderful. But this is, you know, it's a good knife. Good job, Civivi. I like this one a lot. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Just trying to find my card. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. Uh, and if you enjoy my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.